In today's high-reliability fiber optic networks, low-loss splicing is the cornerstone of optimal network performance. Unlike copper wire that relies on physical contact for a splice, optical fibers must be correctly aligned and held in position to transfer a maximum amount of light across the splice. Historically, fusion splicing appeared in the 1970s when the fiber being deployed was multimode. Even with the relatively large core sizes of multimode fiber, aligning fibers for low losses was a very difficult process because fiber tolerances were very poor and the fiber optic connectors at the time lacked the precision to produce reliable, repeatable low loss results at a reasonable cost. In time, low reflectance would be added to the requirements for fiber optic splices. In addition, the workforce was not yet accustomed to working with glass and the small alignment tolerances involved. This required good eye and hand skills and provided challenges for the fiber optic technician working in the outside plant and its varying environments. The industry soon recognized that in order for fiber optics to become a viable transmission technology, high quality, reliable splicing techniques and equipment must be developed. The ultimate goal of splicing is to create a permanent low loss optical joint with high mechanical strength and long term reliability. Ideally, the process should be fast, inexpensive, and should not require excessive skill to perform. First efforts included mechanical splices, which had the ability to be tuned for optimum alignment. The elastomeric splice manufactured by GTE was the first of these splice types to be used on a large scale. It was provided in two basic versions, a lab splice for bare fiber access and a field version used for inline and pigtail splicing. As with copper networks, fiber systems would require cable splicing as well as fiber splicing. So other organizations such as Bell Labs, Corning, NTT, Sumitomo Electric and Fujikura began working on methods of using fibers as opposed to mechanically holding the fibers together. The main challenge to their efforts was the poor mechanical tolerances of the fiber available at the time. These tolerances included the outside diameter, or OD, of the cladding, which were at the time 125 plus or minus 6 microns, cores with plus or minus tolerances of 3 or more, the centering of the cores, and the ovality, or how round the fiber was. These problems are magnified when splicing two fibers together which lead to enormous difficulties in developing equipment that could accurately align such fibers. What emerged from the research labs was a basic concept that is still used today in fusion splicing equipment. The idea was to place each fiber in a pair of V-groove fixtures with one fixture that could be moved in the X, Y and Z directions. By passing light through the fibers and measuring the amount of light received across the junction, the fiber alignment could be optimized. When this is done, a small electric arc is fired which heats the fibers to their melting point, causing them to fuse together and form a permanent splice. Fusion splices are compact, and when recoded, their cross-sectional area is no larger than the original fiber. They are also stable, so their alignment and transmission characteristics do not change over time or with temperature. In addition, Fusion splices do not allow dust or contaminants to enter the optical path. Of course, fusion splicing is not the only way to join optical fibers. The development of mechanical splicing techniques and optical connectors paralleled the development of fusion splicing. A mechanical splice can be a temporary or permanent connection between optical fibers that does not involve a thermally welded joint. In some applications, the lack of a welded joint can be an advantage, such as in the case of a pair of fibers made from types of glass that are not thermally compatible. In the mechanical splice, two prepared fiber ends are mechanically aligned to each other in a special housing. Index matching gel is placed between the fiber ends to maximize optical coupling while reducing reflections. Mechanical splices can be performed quickly, without the use of expensive equipment, making them ideal for emergency restorations. Unfortunately, in the early days of fiber optics, 
mechanical splices were not as reliable over time and exhibited higher losses than fusion splices. Additionally, the refractive index of the index matching gels used changed with temperature, making mechanical splices undesirable for permanent connections in varying environmental conditions. Today, we have better fibers and tolerances, better products, tools, and equipment which allow users to choose from a multitude of splicing products to meet their needs. There are also splicing products available today that could never have been envisioned in the early years of fiber optic technology. In this video, we will demonstrate the correct methods of preparing, cleaving, splicing, and protecting optical fibers, as well as present several variations of splicing products and techniques.